All right, so what I wanted to show you was that's the kitchen window, that is the bathroom window, that is uh, Gladys and Vernon's bedroom window. But I want to show you, and I actually shot this earlier driving my Jeep, but I wanted to do it on the Segway so we could kind of almost walk there where we're trying to go. So Elvis would have walked down here, and where we're going is to the record store where he would buy records from. So I would imagine him walking down here. And probably cutting through. Cutting through here. So now this building was not here at the time. So it's possible that he would have gone through there. I don't think all this fencing was here. Oh, you can come on. Thank you. I'm gonna have to get off of it to cross this little hump right here. Appreciate it. So we're gonna scoot down here. I like that, man. Yes, sir. So there's the trees down. We had a big storm last night. Electricity's out. And almost the whole city. This thing's trying to throw me off. I've seen the snow stoplights are not working. But this is the record store, right over here. And I'll show you the next part of the video. Hey there. So he would have walked down to here. And now the store, as I'll show you in another part of this segment, was actually right here in this parking lot. So friends, this right here is Popular Tunes, 306-308 Popular Avenue, which is going to be right, right here. And this was the original El uh, Memphis record shop, and Elvis bought his first record from here. And Elvis lived, at the time, Lauderdale Courts right over there. And Scotty Moore, as I mentioned, went over there to visit Elvis when Sam asked him to go listen to him and Scotty told me about a record collection that Elvis had of some 78s Big Mama Thornton singing Hound Dog and Sammy Davis Jr. and some different stuff and he listened to him right here he had one of those little tiny record players and this talks about a young Elvis who lived nearby bought his first record here his career began to take off Elvis frequented the shop hit in a corner to hear how customers were reacting to his latest release Another drop-in was Sam Phillips of Sun Recordings, often introducing Kyogi to the new talent such as Jerry Lee Lewis. The store's success led to the founding of High Records headquartered next door. High's most famous artists were the Bill Black Combo, which Bill Black played bass for Elvis, the original bass player, Willie Mitchell, and Al Green. So now you know Joe Kyogi and John Narvasis opened the store in 1946. That happened here friends right there and that's Lauderdale Courts over there that's how close Elvis lived right there so the reality is is that was Poplar Tunes that is now what they're calling Poplar Tunes but you could see that that is the back part that you see back over there the record store was actually right here on the front and where the parking lot is is where the actual store was and that's in the process of being torn down in this picture. But that is where Poplar Tunes record shop was, actually right here. That is not really the original building, not that building right there. They tore it down to build a gas station, friends. Yep, Poplar Tunes right there.
that is the picture before and after and I would move up and make it a little more centered but there's a tree right here in the way but that is it friends I'm gonna go to the street you know what I'm gonna go out there and get a, a better perspective stay tuned friends so friends this first picture is Elvis and Dewey Phillips and I'm assuming the other guy's the owner of Poplar Tunes Dewey was the first DJ uh, WHBQ Red Hot and Blue to play an Elvis record. And uh, he died very young, died at the age of 42. And that would have been about 1956 that this picture was taken. This is Elvis actually in the record store. And as you can see, he's really a snappy dresser, as you would imagine. And this is the sign that was out front called it uh, Memphis's Original Record Shop, which is true. Although the building that you see now is not the original as I showed you. And this is the is the building. You can see that there's nothing happening in there now. It's all but closed down. But the actual record store was really here. And I showed you the picture of it in another segment, but it was actually here. Now this I think may have been next door. And you can see there's even a bullet hole right there but I think this was actually next door based on the pictures I don't know if it was really part of the record shop or not but that's showing part of the of the deal and you see it was a cafe or something but it's actually closed down it didn't it didn't flourish so now let's go back to Lauderdale So this right here is where he had the picture made in the army outfit, right in front of those windows right over there. You see that it says Presley Family at Lauderdale Courts. And we're staying, that is the living room with the windows open right there, and that is Elvis's bedroom right there. I'm gonna see if I can come around this side. This is an on-ramp. You see the road saying it's closed over here on this side. But this was actually an on-ramp back then. This was not an on-ramp, I should say. This was actually a street right here. And when they built the highway, they built that. But when Elvis lived here, you can see right here at 185, when he lived here, this was a street. You can see the street going down the side right there. So this street right here was where they would park their cars and stuff. So they would use that door. That was actually the front door. Instead of the way we're entering through the laundry room, they would enter through this door right here. And of course, none of this gate, this highway wasn't even here. The street that you're driving on right here was the street or your street that you see right over there was the street at the time. And they've got this gate locked for right now. So I'm gonna have to go around. But that is it right there, friends. That is the spot, and the thing that you see, the picture with him, uh, like he's holding a gun, the footprint is down there in the crook of that, right in there. So he was actually standing right there. But I bet many a day and many a night he sat out on that stoop right there and played music. And you see we're that close to the pyramid, it's right there. pull up in here and I would think that in order for him to get around here and take the picture here he would have had to come around this way because there's no way to get out this door from inside I tried to figure it out now maybe back then it was open but there's no doorway to this that I could find a way to get out here but I would assume that somebody was coming here maybe to pick him up or something of that nature is the reason he was on this side of the building because there's no easy access from here. Still no lights, no electricity.
and the gates are, are open because there's no electricity to operate them. So I don't know why they painted these blue footprints kind of like the ones that are over there or the one that's over there. So that is the place in the crook of the building right here. And I'm revisiting some of these things. I know you've already seen them if you've watched my other Lauderdale video, but I want to be sure that you kind of get an idea about the, the layout and the way the place looked. So this was the original street and you can see they had parking places down the side. Now, I doubt the parking was like that. I think the parking was probably more like this. But the, the street was here where this sidewalk is at. So this definitely was not here at the time. And that means that the, the front yard was more like where the green grass is only. It, that was how much there was. But this is the stoop right here. So if you walk through that door, walk through there up the stairs, the door is right there. And there's the blue footprint right there. So you've seen a couple of pictures, one with him standing here like he's shooting and that pick doorway in the background. And there they are, friends. Now we'll see we're on the other side of that fence. Before I was with a guide, so I didn't have much time to shoot I had to shoot quickly. This time, I am staying here, so I got plenty of time. And I also got my trusty Segway, so I'm not having to walk all these ways. I'm just cruising around. So friends, look on my channel for the Lauderdale videos where I actually stayed there and toured it and tightened up every chance you get.